Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a similar problem to the one that we did on the last video with one exception. The box is not being pulled at a constant speed but allowed to accelerate because the force by which we pull on the box is now large enough to not only drag it up against friction but also to give it some additional acceleration. So how do we calculate the work done to drag the box a distance of 5 meters? Well, notice in order to do that, we are going to calculate the total work done, but we're also going to calculate the work done to give it kinetic energy because it's going to pick up speed, so it's going to gain kinetic energy. We're going to calculate the work done to overcome friction. Those two combined should equal the total work done, and in addition to that, we're going to need to calculate the acceleration and the final velocity in order to be able to do all that. So to make it a little bit easier, we've already put in the expression for the x component of the force and the y component of the force, so 17.32 newtons uh, for the x component, 10 newtons for the y component, and then notice we have a total force of 20 newtons pulling at an angle of 30 degrees. Now, to get the work done, we should only take the x component of the force and multiply it times the displacement to get the total work done. So let's do that first. So we can say that the total work done is equal to the x component of the displacement, displacement times the displacement, which is equal to 17.32 newtons multiplied times 5 meters. And let's see here. What's the total of that? That's uh, 17.32 times 5, which is 86.6 joules. So that's the total work done to pull the box to the right a distance of 5 meters. Now what portion of that work will be used to overcome friction and what portion of the work will be used to overcome kinetic energy, that we'll get in just a moment. So first let's identify all the forces on the box besides this force right here. We have the force Mg pulling down and we have the normal force pushing back up. Now in this case the normal force is going to be equal to the weight of the box minus the component F sub y pulling up on the box. So in this case, that would be equal to mg, which is the mass, 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second square. Subtract from that the 10 newtons, which is equal to 49 newtons minus 10 newtons. And so finally, we can say that the normal force is going to be equal to 39 newtons. All right, now we can calculate the friction force. We have a friction force pulling to the left in the opposite direction of motion. And we can say that the friction force, by definition, is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. And in this case, the normal force is 39 newtons, and the coefficient of friction is 0 0.2. And so we can see that the friction force, see 39 divided by 5, is 7.8 newtons. Now we're ready to calculate the work done to overcome the friction, because notice that the friction force is pulling to the left and the displacement is pulling to the right. So that means we're going to get negative work done. Or we can simply say the work done to overcome friction is the friction force multiplied times the displacement. The amount of force we have to pull to the right, a portion of F sub X is pulling to the right to overcome the friction force, and so we set that portion equal to the friction force and multiply it times the displacement. So we can say that the work done to overcome friction is therefore equal to the friction force, or a force equivalent to the friction force pulling to the right times the displacement D, which in this case is 7.8 newtons, multiply times 5 meters, and so that's 5 times 7, that's 35, that's 39 newtons. So we require, oh, newton meters, newton meters, which is equal to 39 joules. I'm messing up a little bit here, 39 joules. So of the 86.6 joules of work done by F sub X, 39 joules is used to overcome the friction, and the remainder is the amount of work done to give the block kinetic energy. So now let's subtract the two and see what that would be equal to. So the, the amount of work done to give us kinetic energy would be equal to the total work done, which is 86.6 joules minus the 39 joules 
to overcome the friction. So that would be equal to 47.6 joules. Now let's see if we can find that in another way to verify that that's indeed correct. So first we're going to find the acceleration of that block. We know that acceleration A is equal to the net force divided by the total mass. In this case, there's only one object. So the net force equals all the forces aiding the acceleration, which would be F sub X, minus the force opposing that acceleration, which is the friction force. And we divide that by the mass. So here, F sub X would be 17.32 newtons, minus the force due to friction, which is 7.8 newtons. And we divide all that by 5 kilograms, and that will give us the acceleration of the block. So let's see what that's equal to. 17.32 minus 7.8, and we divide that by 5. That gives an acceleration of 1.904 meters per second square. So this is the acceleration of the block as the force is pulling it to the right. Now we want to know the final velocity. Since we don't know how long it takes for the block to cover 5 meters, we're going to use the third equation of kinematics, which tells us that V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2 times acceleration times the displacement delta x. In this case, the delta x is the distance. And V initial is going to be 0 because the block starts from rest. So that means that V final is equal to the square root of 2 times A times D which is equal to, because this portion right here goes to zero, so it's going to be the square root of 2 times A, which is 1.904, times D, which is 5. So it's basically the square root of 19.04. 4.3635 meters per second. So that will be the final velocity after the block is covered 5 five uh, meters. So now we can say that the work done to, to give it kinetic energy is going to be equal to one half mv squared. The final kinetic energy that's gained, that should equal to the work done to give it that kinetic energy, which is equal to one half times the mass times the final velocity, 4.3635 squared, and that should equal the number that we got here from subtracting the, kinetic, the work done to overcome friction from the total work done. So let's see if that's the case. We square that number times 5 divided by 2 equals, and I get 47.6 joules. And notice, yes, that's the exact value that we expected to get. And so it looks like we did it correctly. So first of all, we calculated the work done the total work done by the force, we take the x component of the force because it's in the same direction as displacement. We multiply the x component of the total force and we multiply times displacement to get the total work done by that force. Then we calculate the normal force, which is equal to the weight minus the y component pulling the block up. Then we calculate the friction force, which by definition is the normal force times the coefficient of friction. Normal force times the coefficient of coefficient of friction gives us the friction force, 7.8 newtons, and then the work done to overcome friction is the friction force times the displacement, which is 39 newton meters or 39 joules. Finally, when we subtract the 39 from the 86.6, we get 47.6 joules. That should be the, the, end, the work done to give the block kinetic energy. We first calculated the acceleration, then we calculated the final velocity, and then we calculated 1 half mv squared, which is the kinetic energy the block will have after it's moved 5 meters. That kinetic energy is exactly the same as the work done to give it kinetic energy. Should be the same, which means we did it correctly. And that is how it's done.